Question number 7 asks us to derive the formula for the volume of the frustum of a cone given to us in section 13.5 using the symbols as explained. So we will be drawing a figure first as seen here. Here we have a cone OAB whose base radius is R1, total height of the cone is H1 and its total slant height is L1. To get a frustum out of it, we have made use of a plane which is parallel to its base AB which is DC which cuts the cone into two parts that is a cone which is formed at the top and a frustum which is created at the bottom. Now we have taken the slant height of the frustum part to be L and its height to be H. So the slant height of the cone which is formed above the smaller cone we can take it as L2 and its height as H2. So L2 can also be written as L1 minus L and H2 can also be written as H1 minus H. Now if we consider or focus two triangles that is triangle OAP and onto triangle ODQ we see that these two triangles are similar to each other. So that is we write triangle OAP is similar to triangle ODQ. Therefore DQ by AP will be equal to OQ by OP and that will be equal to OD by OA. So we'll be substituting the lengths from the figure. So DQ is R2. So we'll get R2 by R1 equals OQ which will be H1 minus H divided by OP that is H1 and this will be equal to L1 minus L divided by L1. So further simplifying it, we'll get it as R2 by R1 equals 1 minus H by H1 and that equals 1 minus L by L1. So equating these two first, we'll get R2 by R1 equals 1 minus H by H1. So H by H1 will be equal to 1 minus R2 by R1. Rearranging the terms and simplifying, we will get H1 to be equal to H times R1 divided by R1 minus R2. So the next part that we will be doing is we will have to find the volume of the frustum of the cone. So the volume of the frustum of the cone will be the volume of the total cone OAP minus the volume of the smaller cone ODC. So this is how we will write it. That is the volume of frustum of cone will be equal to volume of cone OAP minus volume of cone ODC. So we will be substituting the formulas for these. So that will be 1 by 3 pi r1 square h1 minus 1 by 3 pi r2 square times h1 minus h. We will be substituting the value of h1 in these. So that will be 1 by 3 pi r1 square times h r1 divided by r1 minus r2 minus 1 by 3 pi r2 square h1's value again will substitute it as hr1 divided by r1 minus r2 minus h. On simplification we will get this as 1 by 3 pi r1 cube h divided by r1 minus r2 minus pi r2 cube h divided by r1 minus r2. What we can take common from these two is pi h by 3. So what we will be left inside will be r1 cube minus r2 cube divided by r1 minus r2. So that implies pi h divided by 3. We can make use of the identity of a cube minus b cube. So making use of that identity we can write r1 cube minus r2 cube as r1 minus r2 times r1 square plus r2 square plus r1 r2 and this whole is then divided by r1 minus r2. So r1 minus r2 and r1 minus r2 gets cancelled. So the 
volume of the frustum of the cone will be pi h by 3 times r1 square plus r2 square plus r1 r2. And this is how we derive the formula to find the volume of the frustum of a cone. To learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap, a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.